see the opening in the Tupal of Carlson. It's another, another Gioco Pianissimo. Magnus probably sees no reason to deviate from what he did in the classical. Yeah, here we are, a5. And there we saw rookie one, bishop a7. In the Armageddon, we've seen a lot of white players go for bishop g5 here, which they usually consider too, too risky in classical, but in the must win, might as well. Let's see if Topalov joins the team. No, he goes rookie one again, bishop a7. And knight bd2, Topalov not deviating either. Castles, knight f1. I wonder if Magnus will say, you know what, I didn't like the structure from the last game. I'll, I'll try to play. Play another move like knight e7 here is also possible. And yeah, that's what he does. He goes knight e7. He says no more bishop e6 for you, sir. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Keeps the position flexible. And uh, Magnus, of course, starting with a three minute deficit, but has draw odds. And uh, I can tell you, still no decision made in the Shakriar versus Timur Rajabov game he still has to move his queen ah he moved it back to e1 keep an eye on it probably we should switch to when Ratalos. yep let's go back gets even lower here it's a actually very close to symmetrical position if white played a4 rookie 8 would be fully symmetrical so not that much happening some preparation and now he regains it on d4 yeah, he's fine. Yeah. It looks like uh, yeah, Magnus is fine. So everything is calm there, but it's not calm in the Armageddon. Yep. Still fine. Um. And I will keep you posted on whatever Shakriar does. Yeah, here. The game has simplified somewhat. Carlson regained his pawn on d4 and is now exchanging this bishop so it's opposite colored bishops just to be a little careful that there are no attacks against h7 but c5 fortifying this bishop on d4 and then if needed g6 still looks like black is doing all right yep d1 maybe the power just wants to take it rook a6 fancy i told you that's his uh, trademark Get the rook to an open horizontal line and swing that rook across. Swing it. <laughs> or shake it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, very nice move from Magnus. G3. G3. Somehow it feels like rook e8. And I was thinking if you okay. go rook e6 and f6, maybe you can think about some fun on the f line. Okay. But this is it's losing sight of f7 though, and nice move by Topal of b4. Now if a takes b, bishop takes. You're not happy to have your rook on e8 all of a sudden. Oh, well played by Veselina. This could be <gasps> rook e8 was a little careless and <laughs> losing sight oh. of that pawn. Yep, and uh, Shaq has made a move. Carlson all of a sudden worse after b4. He's uh, I think in serious trouble. He probably has to take, bishop takes, and then go back with the rook, which is not something you love doing. And with this extra time with e6 looming, it's, it's a little unpleasant for, for the world champion. He's also losing time now trying to figure out how to deal with this b4, which came as an unpleasant surprise. So Carlsen in some trouble? Whoa, look at this. Carlsen delivering a tactical blow, bishop c4, rook f six swinging but okay the question is if you capture that pawn the, sorry if you capture that rook it looks Black should be fine queen e4 mm -hmm. and the, the end games are at least drawn yeah so you have to go away and that's what veseline does queen g4 and uh, now you can't capture the pawn because uh, rook takes bishop is in the air yeah, rook g6 queen e2 Mm -hmm. Carlson down to two minutes, but Topalov also only has three, and Topalov is not known to be a specialist for having very little time on the clock, so he also has to be careful. Yep. So Magnus is much more experienced in blitz and bullet, so if the clocks get really low, it should favor the world champion. 
Yeah. And uh, there is a threat on the board of playing rook to b2, offering up a trade, and he steps forward with his king. But uh, I liked your bishop b5. That kind of restricted the range of that rook. So now rook b2, forcing the white rook to step forward. But now there's a trade, and this will help Magnus in his quest for that draw. Yeah, simplification is useful. But this structure is still dangerous for black. b5 is a nice move. Um, I would Can you take guess it? if bishop b5, queen b7 is um, the trick. Yep, he's taken it. I mean, but how tricky is it? Bishop I think takes. It's quite tricky. Because if bishop d3, there's rook takes e5, and he gets rid of his main enemy, this pawn on e5, which was really restricting his pieces. And if bishop takes e8, queen e4, followed by queen e5, it's just a draw, so mm -hmm. nice. That's a very nice spot with very limited yeah. time. I mean, certainly a nice spot, but I mean, is there still some danger? I'm just thinking that the eight, eight pawn can start. Making it way, its way me. Ah, it's way up the board. I don't think so. I think it's just equal now. Okay. And all the while, Shaq has not made a move against Rajabov. So he's still pondering over whether to play the queen to the center to e4 or to capture the pawn. And, and uh, that's it. We <coughs> have a result. Draw. He's done. After mm. this, b5, queen b7. Good spot by Carlson. Wasn't a some pressure. That saves himself there with b5.